Good, that should uh, keep us going. Oh, how was your weekend? All right. Um, you know, it's just this undulation between quiet and... Yeah, I suppose it was quite quiet. Um, no, I don't believe there was any face-to-face -face contact with anybody. There might have been. I don't think so. Oh, right, OK. Did you watch the live stream that Sam did? I, 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 I watched, I, I watched the last... I, I mean... This morning I watched a little bit of it. I watched the ending, and um, was she late coming on or something? Because I couldn't find it. Um, I don't know. It was about twenty minutes, and I yeah. don't think that I don't think she really interacted with people on it. Um, so she mainly just comes on, and I think she kind of answered. You know, she made certain points and asked answered certain questions that may have been floating around anyway mm -hmm. uh, about about obvious issues. Um, but I don't think she was straight batting questions that were being asked to her live and direct. Um, I see. Either way, you know, I'm, get, I'm, I'm getting the impression that it's a good start. Good. Right, I'm just trying to balance this so I can light up. There we are. Can you hear me all right? I can, yeah. Don't do that. I'm on the phone. Thank you. Oh, don't squirt, Ebony. That's not nice. Oh, will you boys go go and play out on the road? Look, to oh mate, blimey, that is a monster. Rasmus has got a great big water pistol out around you. <laughs> <laughs> and is he waving it? He's here with his mate, and they're. Uh... <laughs> I love it. Oh. It's a beautiful day here. It's it's. Uh... Absolutely go. Cool. I spoke to my sister in Wales there. It's not, is it nice with you? Yeah, I mean, in the morning it's cold, but um, it's sort of quite clear skied and sunny. Good, good. So anyway, you, you watched the last 10 minutes and you, were there many people watched it, do you think? Um, I didn't monitor... But I get the. I mean, there were certainly people there. You know, it wasn't. It didn't. It, it didn't fall on its face. There were people there. Because well, I noticed her page, the actual MP page, they've got twelve hundred people have liked it. I mean, if they're real and they all vote, that you know, it's gonna. I don't know what the turnout will be, but. Uh... What she said was this. Towards the end, she made a really good point. She said there are certain people saying that you need to vote tactical, and she basically said, "Fuck that shit, man. Just vote with your heart." Mm. You know. Uh, I asked Rod Little what he thinks. Can you go and do that somewhere else? Because I'm trying to work here. Yeah. I asked Rod Little a few days ago what he thinks. He said uh, Tory. He's very confident it's a Tory win. Uh, <coughs> obviously, he's from Middlesbrough. And he said, I'll get back to you in a few days once I've gone and done some leafleting. So he'll be leafleting for the Tories. Who will? Rod Little. No way. Really? Good Lord. Yeah. Well, he would say that he'd expect them to win, wouldn't he? I guess. Yeah, but I mean, it's not just that. It's also the fact that he's then afterwards saying, yeah, I'm fucking going to, I'm going to give out leaflets for them. I mean, what a mentality. You know, from the pure gangster. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh... It's disappointing, really, especially with where Boris is with his regime and where the country is in terms of just a complete and utter squashing of civil liberties. So it tells us something more about Rod Liddle than it does about the Tories, I think, that he would be pushing that dystopian bollocks that, that we're all faced with which is basically from a false sale of goods in the december 2019 election yeah no good point um as for green sill um i noticed that um, so because basically i've started to use youtube downloader a bit and so yeah. i went on to linkedin and i looked at green sill <laughs> on linkedin and i noticed that there's the occasional uh promotional video that they have then um i said right green sill google video and there's 13 green sill videos on Vimeo. Okay. And so, so, so it was quite fun for me to try and use YouTube Downloader on yeah. the browser, which didn't work. Then I tried to use it on the code, 
Uh, and eventually I was able to download the Greensill videos. Now, I, I, I appreciate that's not the sort of thing that's going to get most people excited. But um, <laughs> I, I, I put them, I mean, I, I it's figured a very, might... very powerful tool that, that YouTube downloader. It's useful. It's, yeah, it saves time, doesn't it? Yeah. So the thing is that I don't, I don't know how long that those videos are going to be available for. So I, I'm glad that I grabbed them. And yeah. I put I put a bunch of them together onto a YouTube video and I uploaded it. Uh, yeah. I said hashtag Green Sill. Um, so a bunch of them are pr promo videos. One of them, so their chief financial officer or something of that of that type, whoever's in charge of finance, is a guy called Raz Bart. So maybe Rasmus Bartholomew or something like that. Dutch guy, and uh, ex HSBC. So right. one of the one of the guys jumped from uh, Vodafone. Another one came from HSBC. And there was a video of this guy doing a talk with a bunch of other people at the at some World Economic Forum thing, introduced by somebody from NatWest, which is obviously RBS. Uh, I, did, I didn't listen to the other people. But when this guy came on from Greensill, there was a moment. You know, he's just doing the spiel, which I've now heard loads, you know, about what their business model is. Um, but there was a point where he said, it's like a great reset. He, he <laughs> used, it was, it was so very, when was this, when, when was this, uh, I think it must've been last March. Was it last or last January, wasn't it? That they did the no, one. No, I think maybe, the... maybe COVID was delayed and it was digital or maybe it was a non Davos COVID. Uh, okay, I mean, uh, non Davos world the... economic forum. Davos WF happened before the pandemic hit, and then the next one they did was digital, which was the following. And whether there was an interim one, I don't know. Yeah, I'll check the date. Um, but it was interesting to hear at one point he says blah 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 blah, and it's just so many buzzwords, man. It's really interesting hearing those buzzwords repeatedly again because I've really shied away from that whole world of being around that, and now. It's really interesting because you know they keep on talking about their model. The other thing that's quite so funny. What, is, what was their model? Well, they call it oh, supply chain. Well, I mean, obviously, I can't fuck with you when it comes to this shit. So you you're going to spot if I don't know what I'm talking about. And obviously, I'm not one of them. So you know, here's me having a go. I don't know anything about them. Yeah, exactly. So it's called I supply chain. So yes. Sure. Yeah, so what they say is that Greensill Capital is, they refer to it as a supply chain finance company. Right. Does that mean anything to you? I would need it more than that. Okay, That's yeah, and so then the other thing, they, sure, sure. So then they say that the old school term for supply chain finance, uh, which you might be more familiar with, I certainly wasn't, is factoring. Yeah. So they say that's all it is. It's a yeah. factoring company. But what they okay. decide, what that's they decide, what Klarna is as well. So they're the first failure of the um, open banking. Then really, well, they wanted to call themselves a fintech firm, which they aren't. You know, I don't. Well, they all want to do that to get one of the fancy unicorn valuations. Yeah, yeah. So they were saying, you know, we are a fintech firm. And so what I noticed last week on Thursday was that at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, between each section of the news, they changed the definition of Greensill in the initial assumptions, you know, what you say about boundary conditions for the propaganda on the first line. So the first time I heard them talk about it at 11 o'clock, they said failed fintech firm. Then they went to failed bank. And then they even said something like failed lender or something like that. To me, it's shadow banking. Because it's a non credit, it's a non bank well, of credit. Okay, and um, how oh, the did they percent. raise their funding? Did they raise their funding in the secondary markets, the money markets? Uh, I would imagine so, because what they're doing is a kind of it's a it's a bond arbitrage game. Because what they're doing is they are saying that they will pay people's suppliers or employees up front mm. in exchange for a tiny percentage on so top that was the of... payday loan part of it they were making yeah, loans to national health service staff yeah it's payday loan but except for nhs they basically said we won't charge you anything we do it for free and so then you start i think going into 
the fact that what they want to do is they just want to issue a bond off blue chip income. And then once they start doing that, then they can start playing games themselves. Either way, whilst they were doing all of that, then they also entered into the relationship with the steel magnate and they ended up lending him probably so much money that they ended up becoming a steel company as well. Okay, and they made loans under the business support scheme for the COVID-19 furlough. They managed to get uh, some, yeah, they were able to issue loans with the government backing them. Um, and that is one thing that they were allowed. They asked for other stuff, right. which they weren't. Well, hold on a second. Let, let's just stop there for a second. The money which they issued from the government, was it underwritten by the government and provided by another fund? Or did they raise some sort of bond against it? Because obviously this is what Cameron went to see Rishi Sunak about. Yeah, I think he went over two things. I think on the one hand, he just wanted money. But on the other hand, he settled for... Yeah, no, he wanted the NHS contract. He wanted money, I think. Uh, and then also he wanted to be one of the issuers. Right, OK. Because it's, it's a lot more relevant... In this general context, so what I've been working on, Ranjan, is looking at the open banking timeline from 2018, looking at the new regulatory framework going forward from 2020 through to 2025. Uh, and I've been looking at the prudential uh, regulation and the conduct regulation as it applies to the UK. And then there's a lot of European legislation about this, and it's all being tailored in an overall context of moving banking, number one, digit to digital, but number two, to open banking and a liberalised third market. And that liberalised third market is similar to what's happened in water and other utilities. OK, um, and effectively what it what it's doing is it's it, it, it's growing a beard for the. Uh, for the consolidated commercial banks who are going digital and are, I mean, obviously, we know they're hand in glove with the central banks, um, but this is all tied up with the vaccine passport and the Indian thing that we talked about. And that's why Boris wants to go to India. So what's yeah, exactly, he's just called it off. He just had to he's been forced to call it off. But yeah, exactly. What's the Indian thing called again? Let's just get this down. Ardha. A so double A double A R. Okay. Ardha. Well obviously to know how that's going and all the rest of it, he can just zoom anyway. He wants to go on the, the jolly on the new jet that he's had done and all that sort of thing, doesn't he? I mean uh, the guy's a complete bloody chancer. I mean, I'm not, not going to pull any punches on Boris anymore. Um, he's totally found out. Digital bank, strategic launch. Yeah, it's a 2014. And it's by Chris Skinner, who's quite big in that. I think so he's who's a, Chris Skinner? Um, he, runs a, he runs a blog, which I don't look at much, but he's, it's called The Financer, a blog. He's, he's been really into He's an ex-City of London insurance guy, but he's gone really into this whole... Right. Uh, Okay. He, he likes to put, to help people understand how tech works. Right. OK. Um, so that section we've just done, OK, it, 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 it's totally relevant. And I think we need to sort of get that into a segment. The next segment. OK. I'm recording, by the way. Yeah. 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 I can see that the next segment is to do with uh, the current. That, that was green still open banking and all the rest of it. Now, related to that, OK, is where we're currently at with the hot water that Andrew Bailey finds himself in. I put a document up online earlier called um, uh, the Bailey Brigands. OK, so Andrew Bailey and his band of brigands, basically highway robbers. Okay. Andrew Bailey, as you know, this was involved in the RBS cover ups. OK, the business loan support scheme that was hatched in 2009, 2010. 
okay and then all the grg stuff so post post the um 2008 meltdown okay that is a model for post 2021 covid 19 fur furlough meltdown and what you saw after 2008 was a consolidation of the banking sector you saw santander um they'd already been picking up through the noughties bradford and bingley alliance and leicester okay went on to picking up hbos and all of that stuff now it, this is a timeline i did a document at the end of last week with a timeline from 1979 through to 2025 okay beginning middle and end the beginning is big bang deregulation of the city taking skin out of the game um, making uh, broker firms allowing them to have limited liability instead of uh, personal liabilities in partnerships yeah so that's the beginning of our timeline which then takes us into the early 90s recession and the dot-com bubble burst then through to the 2008 meltdown and uh, what happened in the US what happened in um, the UK and then what happened in Europe the Swedish meltdown in 1992 is particularly interesting because it comes you know part way through there and it kind of puts Sweden ahead of the curve uh, in terms of basically government control of their banking se sector the, the, the Riksbank bank obviously has been there all along um, and they do things slightly differently here but it's um th then you've got a factor in the ecb the euro the the whole political landscape going to more and more centralization okay and the great reset isn't a new thing it's not a new opportunity it's the it, it, it's the next stage of the consolidation all right so you have to look at the whole timeline to get the overall picture and when you do that you can actually start making some pretty good guesses of what is happening in this whole process what what klaus schwab's process is 2016 to 2020 again is key because we had brexit and we also had um the trump administration the election of president trump in, in, in the states um and that is very interesting because it actually led to the postponement of ttp and ttip okay and you look in all of the governance measures in ttip and ttp it's very technocratic and it, it's outside of existing uh legislative frameworks just on that just to say quickly that um mode four is apparently baked into all trade deals so mode four is that thing i don't know if i mentioned it to you but it's that thing in the un sorry world trade organization gats thing where it means that foreign workers can come here uh, and be I got paid yeah. the same they as they got paid, paid over there got yeah yeah so it's kind of and like hard part, so it limits the yeah. costs yeah and also the hearts reforms in germany that's all wrapped up in that as well now yeah. santander is interesting and the current guy at rbs or lloyd's rather is going now to run citibank no antonio vitario when, when was yeah. that announced last week he, he he's the basically he's the chief executive elect now of citibank or of the uk or of the whole thing the whole thing i think which basically he did his job okay did his job at santander Fucking okay. hell man then, so i mean basically he's kind of like the i don't what know what you call him the dark prince yeah what an attitude i mean that's total like state control isn't it really because he because when he went when he went to lloyd's well, no it's not it, 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 it it's quite the opposite what it is it's it's central banks and commercial banks wagging the government dog it's the tail wagging the dog which is the problem we have in commerce okay. And okay, okay. I mean, what I meant was it's it's the it's the interaction. I should have said that more. Um, mm. You know, it's it's 
it's basically he's being rewarded for having interacted with the state the way that he has, you know, as opposed to just doing the anyway, you know, yeah, obviously I, 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 it's not he, banking. He's an interesting character. And so, you know, I made the horse race video. OK, which I still is the beginning it, of that time. Right. Well, that's kind of what this is about. Okay. I did a follow up, which is an hour long live stream I did about the Transparency Task Force um, symposium that happened last Wednesday when Steve Middleton gave the first talk, Mark Wright gave about the fourth talk, uh, an estate agent from Ireland gave one about Ulster Bank and all what's happened in Northern Ireland. Um, there's another guy called Clive May gave a talk about his I know experiences. Clive. Yeah, right. I know Clive from Wales. Yeah, lovely guy. Yeah, right, EFG, so, EFG is the name of the thing that they did him anyway, on. Anyway, you, sh you should watch the whole thing because there's tons of material in there. Double that up with Paul Carlier's talk from about three weeks ago, which I also blo blogged about. OK, and then basically we've got the whole framework. But what we've also got is the <clears throat> the 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 framework going forward to actually counter these um, these fascist technocratic structures that, 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 that they're trying to impose upon us all. That, that's where we're at. We're right, right at the cutting edge of this now, Ranjan. We, we, we're right there now. So there's uh, an opening here in terms of uh, outflanking the mainstream media gatekeepers. OK, so on things like Off Guardian, UK Column, um, the Canary, BuzzFeed. Now, BuzzFeed, what do you know about BuzzFeed? They went very boring uh, because the guy who was there, they had a parliamentary correspondent who was called Jim Waterson. He, I think he'd done some stuff for Guido before and he became the media correspondent for The Guardian and he still is. But when he was the parliamentary correspondent for BuzzFeed, then apparently there's it's not a union or a guild. But amongst the parliamentary correspondents, you have one who's the chief parliamentary correspondent of parliamentary correspondents. And somehow it went to BuzzFeed. It might even have been him. So they went from being anti-establishment to having, you know, press passes and actually, you know, being in charge of it. So they mm -hmm. went quite deep inside. But now they've got no money. So I think they all got sacked. Uh, that's interesting because it was founded by the co-founder of Huffington Post. Is that um, Jonah Peretti? Is that his name or something like that? I can't remember. But yeah, something like that, isn't it? I, I don't know what his name is. Yeah. Um, but in, anyway, uh, Ian Fraser and Paul Carlier mentioned a BuzzFeed article from 2018 or 16. I think I remember that. No, that was that you, you put it up. You talk about the Dash for Cash one. Yeah, it's a brilliant. You put it, you put it up. In, you put it up on your thing. What I'm worried about is that all the links that the documents it links to will disappear. I, I I can't I can't scrape them off the web as they're currently posted. Um, so I just need to find an easy way to get that thing onto a separate server because well, I'm can't surprised. Be that is, 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 do you think it's a lot of documents? It's loads. On it's what you mean on the on the on the BuzzFeed article? Yeah, every highlighted bit of text links to an article at the back of the, you know, which is on obviously the BuzzFeed server. OK. And there's tons and tons of information in there. Like, okay. like I say, I'm surprised it's still up. I'm surprised it's still up if, if they've gone back to the uh, dark yeah, side. My view on that at the time, you know how you can have like extreme factionalism in the small world of <laughs> journalism. So <laughs> most of the stuff that I knew about, because, yeah. I did some stuff with Steve and Mark, but the info that I got from that, I mainly got from Cam uh, from Real Media. Mm -hmm. um, and so Cam told me about the BuzzFeed thing before it was happening and all of this stuff. So I regarded the BuzzFeed people as being quite close to the BBC. And because that's what also happens. There's well, a bit of time. The other thing, Ranjan, You've almost got to talk about periods of the BBC in the same way you talk about periods of Picasso. <laughs> in, 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 you know, um, 
So, for instance, something I've been trying to get my hands on is Panorama did a 2009 program called Bankers Behaving Badly. It's disappeared off the web. The archive isn't linked to in the BBC thing. There's lots of other 2009 panoramas. Um, it, it was really about the offshore banking in Jersey um, and talking about should a government owned bank really be enabling tax evasion. Um, but uh, the only reason I found out about it, I was watching Dragon's Den and someone had a board game and apparently they'd gone bust and it was mentioned in this programme. But I can't find it. So I think there's a piece in it about how RBS was mistreating its customers. Now, what happened is that mistreatment became institutionalized with Andrew Bailey at the helm and with HM Treasury. They all agreed how to repair the two, uh, the tier two um ratios whatever capital ratios uh of of that bank by basically robbing the wealth of people like me and uh what is it nineteen thousand other businesses and and and, and or, or whatever it is six thousand other businesses and nineteen thousand or no it's no no it's nineteen thousand businesses and twenty one million customers or something i mean they they totally and utterly pillaged their customer base across the board um and you know at, at, at huge mates rates insider deals um just to get their own uh, and this is something paul carlier mentions in his talk I, i've got to tell you that's probably one of the most important live streams that has ever gone out on youtube the transparency task force thing I, and i'm not i'm i i'm i'm a bit of a cork sniffer when it comes to uh, streaming. I was, uh, and I was a pioneer of, of, of live streaming. Yeah, uh, back in, back in the nineties. Um, well, no, well, the the mid noughties really. But but um, you know, uh, the, the, this is the point. It's incredibly, incredibly. Um, important that broadcast pause of a couple of weeks ago but the, the one about rbs particularly and the reason i say that is it absolutely puts andrew bailey at the scene of the crime at every step of the way okay it's institutionalized pillage of the small to medium enterprise small business and uh independent trading sectors the lifeblood of the economy has been ripped out um and severely severely impaired and it's a process which has been ongoing and it's it's by design and not by accident and bailey is put at the scene of the crime as it unfolds and that is a big big story um, and within that, th it's three hours, it's two hours of talks and an hour of discussion afterwards. Within that, 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 that there's a thriller, that, that, there's a novel, there's some, uh, there's, there's several textbooks, uh, and there are certainly many, many long form newspaper articles, because it covers just about every facet of, of, of business. Yeah, I better catch up and watch them. I it, seriously, it, it's time well spent. Yeah, I think one of the good things is that because you've given me some background and stuff like that, it's it's going to be a lot easier for me to follow it and stuff. So yeah, yeah. I mean, the, 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 I'll make this point again, and I'll make it over and over and over. The news cycle is bullshit. It's there to distract. There's none of the good stuff in the news cycle. It's there to get other stuff out of the way. So I think I, I was watching UK column. It's all about vaccines and all the rest of it. They are now rummaging around over the ashes uh, of something where they need to be getting to this stuff. They're, they're, they're analysing a crime that's already happened. There's an ongoing crime. There's a crime in, in process. 
that that's a distraction from from the main deal. Um, so I, but when I'm, you say it's a crime process, do you mean do you mean do you mean the 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 data the ID card data and then linking that up with it, a it, narrow it, banking? It, it's all a it's all a pre-call cursor to more pillage and more consolidation. Creorder. Mm. The thing I did about you know chaos from Creorder that that paper that those guys put out is absolutely spot on. It's researched. It's got data and it shows in real time this crime in in, in action. The next step of the crime is to um, put people who have had to borrow in further distress and then clear out the weaker hands that's the next move in all of this so when rishi sunak stood up sort of saying oh well we're, we're you know if it's a viable b business we will support it now what is a viable business and the definition of that under the business support scheme um in 2010 the bailey design business support scheme um right uh viable businesses are marks you know it their definition of a viable business is one <coughs> that they can basically fatten up for Christmas, make oven ready. You know, I mean, it, it's basically oven ready pillage rather than an oven ready Brexit. And that this is all happening. I mean, it, 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 I was talking to my sister earlier and I said, look, Catherine, the, 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 the thing is about the vaccines, the vaccine passports and all the rest of it, they only make sense in respect of, you know, the what's the Indian thing? Aardva. Aardha. 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 Yeah. And open banking. That, that's the key. To, we, we figured this out now, Ranjan, 10 days ago. You know, one of our discussions, which. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I remember. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because well, that's when the penny dropped and everything since then. It's not looking to fit stuff into something like that. It, each new fact now, you can just see where it fits. It, it's like I need to catch up with what you've been saying about open banking, because even though I'd heard of it and, you know, I've had people talk to me about it that were doing it. Um, all this stuff that you've just read in the last few days, I'd really like you to point me to what I should be looking at and then also just tell me what it means as well because if I look at it I just won't get it it's all on high ISU I've put it on Yumpu one document and all the others are on the ISU channel and I've linked to them all I've okay, done brilliant. tweet unrolls it's all there the two diagrams I did the frameworks are both there what okay. there will be in about another week is there will be a searchable database uh, with a front end website, which actually is going to start making all this stuff properly searchable. Uh, okay. We're working on that in Stockholm at the moment. OK, brilliant. Well, shall I let you continue and um, catch up again with you soon or? Yeah, for sure. But ha have a look at that three hours. And and I mean, you've got a genius for for, for, for summary. Um, I, I did a word cloud of it, um, but what what really needs it really needs is it just needs chopping into each of the individual speakers and then take out the key points, particularly the key points. Well, okay, how about this? How about this? They all well, make points in different areas, and they need to be pinpointed, identified, taken out run up a flagpole so that everybody then knows which flagpole they need to go to with their own experience. It will become okay, obvious I don't, to people. I, I, who I, don't, I, I haven't worked with anyone for ages, so I've worked with you more than anyone recently. Mm -hmm. So what, and, and so what, when you asked me to just say what I'd been writing last Sunday, I did. And, you know, I should have really done it again a couple of times or whatever, and I haven't. But that was good because you kind of pointed me towards certain things and pushed me in certain directions. And so it was, I was more focused when it came to scripting. So maybe the best thing for me to do is to have a look at this stuff, summarize it, and then afterwards get your view on what you think I've missed out yeah. or what yeah. I haven't ex uh, uh, prioritized. There, there, there's, there's no way around sitting down and watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know. 
Well, well, there is because I'm going to go walkies and listen to it on my headphones. Uh, well, that's right, but but you know you need to listen to it. But I'll enjoy that. Yeah, great. But but um, it's absolute dynamite. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, don't forget, I've met Steve a couple of times, a few times, and I've been around them. So it's I've I spent more time physically. Well, I don't know. But anyway, I've met Steve a couple of times because he lives in Hull or up mm -hmm. there. But um, he kept me informed of this stuff. And so he's one of the first people that I knew that would use language quickly about concepts that I did know about. But tell me about how they're actually being used in the real world and stuff like that. Did you ever hear the podcast I did with him? No. Ah, OK. Yeah, because Drew deleted it, but I've still got it. Let me oh, dig it up. Dig it up and send me a link. Why did Drew delete it? Because hatred. Do you remember? He 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 suddenly thought I was the devil. Because oh, God. Of okay. That was all part Who of he has never met. Mm. Sorry? OK. Yeah. I said it was all part of his throwing the toys out of the pram. Right. And, well, upload it. Stick it on Financial Eyes and I'll have a listen to it. It should yeah. be online because I mean that guy is 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 He's seriously yeah. sort of on it with this shit. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. I mean that's that is clearly a case of somebody who you know he's allowed to tweet and stuff like that, but they just will not have him say anything in public. I mean it's very rare that you know. You know what I mean? Like, occasionally, I think I've seen his name in the paper a couple of times, but nothing compared to what somebody running Bank Confidential should. None of the good stuff gets on the paper and remains anywhere searchable. Yeah. Where where anything in the 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 the, the new cycle churn is likely to attach to it. I think or I might it just... does, it'll appear and it's made as slippery as possible so that it just doesn't come up. I'm gonna ask if I can. I'm losing contact with her, but there's a woman called um Well, I'll talk about it later because we're recording now. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, talk to you soon. All right, Ranjan. Cheers, mate. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye.